Welcome back to the shop. A buddy of a buddy of mine, my bro brother's friend, he uh, asked me if I could take a look at this Ryobi 40 volt cordless pressure washer for him. Apparently, it turns on, but it fails to develop any pressure. So this is my first look at it, and, and I've just poked around a little bit, and I noticed that the first problem is that the the intake just spins and spins and spins, which is going to be two two problems that I see. One is that it's probably going to leak behind whatever's there, and then I can't really screw the hose onto it because it's just free spinning. But I'm going to dive into this thing and see if I can get it working for him again. I, again, I think it's a mechanical problem, not an electrical problem, which is a plus on, for as far as my mind works. So <laughs> let me dive into this, and I'm going to bring you back at any important points that I think I cross. Well, it didn't take long to figure out what's wrong with this. The twisting motion that I found in there was this, simply freewheeling. And, and the interesting part about it was, typically it would have broke off, but there's a, I think it's the Bernoulli principle, that creates negative pressure. So the water pressure comes through from the city, the city side water pressure, and then there's a low pressure induction as the water shoots across this, it's going to pull, create a vacuum in here, and that pulls from the soap box that I unscrewed from the front of this. This assembly, it wasn't hard. They had a lot of hidden screws, but it wasn't completely terrible. But I think it's the Bernoulli principle. So it's going to, the pressure across there is going to create a, a negative force that's going to pull the soap through there. And that was sort of acting like an axle and keeping it held in place there. Because this isn't mine, I, I don't have the liberty to go ahead and just start doing what I do to things. I want to see what Jeff has to say about it. I called Ryobi. The first thing I they they said that they only have you know Monday through Friday, no other. Um, of course, it's 5:30 now on a Friday, so they're not going to answer the phone. And I don't know what they would tell me, but the pump is unavailable according to my research online. So I'm I'm not. Jeff is stuck with this thing, and my first thought is that I could add an airline fitting because it's effectively a barbed fitting with a 3 8 you know fitting on there and it seems to fit pretty well I think enough to where I could get it to almost bite and in conjunction with some JB weld if I did it carefully I wouldn't get anything down in there I don't know why there's so much oxidation in there and that was I just I don't know what kind of water they ran through this um, but apparently it had a lot of something that precipitated out of it. So I think if this was mine, what I would do is I would screw this into here and see if it works with some JB weld. But I'm going to go ahead and post this video for now and hopefully Jeff can take a look at it and he can give me an idea of if he wants me to package this thing back up and just put it back together and bring it back to him because he's got a couple hundred dollars worth of batteries. These, these 40 volt, big 40 volt batteries cannot be cheap. But, uh, anyway, that's, that's what I found with this. But, but for anybody else that's looking at the Ryobi, if this is going to be instructional, the disassembling it, you know, there's probably a dozen different screws in this captured cage thing. Uh, I, don't, I don't think the build quality is horribly bad on this. I mean, everything looks nice and beefy, big wires, but you're talking, you know, low voltage, higher amps, so these are, these are nice size wires in there. And the fittings aren't necessarily, I can't see, it's all potted in there. So, so it's going to be relatively robust in terms of, um, in terms of, um, you know, weather protection, water protection. I've got some cheesy, chinchy little gaskets here. I'm not a Ryobi fan. I like Makita stuff. But this product is very interesting. I would like to see it work. And one of the things I don't have it with me is it's got a portable bag. You can actually bring your water with you. So if you don't have, you know, city water, because you'd stand to reason if you have city water, you'd have electricity for a regular electric pressure washer. I believe I've done one on my electric pressure washer. I really like it. But disassembling this is not, not a real chore. But what you're going to get into in there is a pump that's ostensibly not available. When I looked up the part number, it came up as a home light product. And like so many things, I eh, fit and finish wires sort of draped everywhere. Um, 
I don't know if any of this is helpful to anybody, but if you have one of these 40 volt things, you know, this is what you're in for if you take it apart. And, and this is just, for as smart as these engineers are, horrible, horrible design. Look at the amount of leverage that's, that's relying on such little pot metal. This is centered pot metal that has no impact resistance. If it was steel, or, or if it was some sort of extruded or machined component, it would be a million times more expensive, of course. But it would have some durability to it, but this, this cast iron stuff is not made for things with a lot of leverage on it. But I'm going to go ahead and post this video and hopefully Jeff can let me know what he wants to do.